Managing Director at NASDAQ, and welcome back to another episode of our NASDAQ CEO Spotlight Series. We're here at the beautiful Alexandria in San Diego as we continue celebrating San Diego Week. With us today, we have Laura Schauber of Synthorix. She is CEO. Synthorix recently listed on NASDAQ in December of 2018 under the ticker symbol Thor. Thanks for being here today. Great to be here, Yvonne. Thanks for the invitation. Absolutely. Well, since you're one of our newest NASDAQ listings in the San Diego area, I'd love to hear a little bit more about the origin of Synthorix and how it came to be. Of course, yes. We have a, a unique platform technology that allows us to tune biologics, and it came uh, from Floyd Romsberg's lab out of the Scripps Research Institute. And the company was founded in 2014, where um, he had spent much of his career seeing if he could identify new ways to tune biologics. And you probably know that therapeutics or human proteins and their use uh, as therapeutics has been around since the early 80s uh, when insulin, human insulin, was first cloned and made in bacteria, specifically in E. coli. And since then, um, we've used E. coli or bacteria to produce uh, human proteins as therapeutics. But unfortunately, we don't have all the necessary tools, or we didn't until Floyd's technology came around to change the properties of biologics. And sometimes that can be as simple as extending half-life for dosing convenience. Sometimes it can be changing binding properties, and that's the use of our platform technology. So in terms of how this can help patients, what can your technology offer that's different than what's already currently out in the market? Yeah, uh, that's a great question. And first, in order to answer that, I have to describe the technology mm -hmm. a little bit more. And I think uh, for your viewers, I think most people know what DNA is mm -hmm. and that there's four letters of, of DNA, A, T, C, and G. And it is that genetic alphabet that codes uh, for proteins, so DNA makes RNA and RNA makes protein, and uh, it is those, um, that, that those four letters uh, that code for all the diversity in life and codes for all the protein that human cells make. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, it's limited, the four letters of DNA and the 20 amino acids that are found in proteins cannot give certain properties that we would like to have in protein therapeutics. Uh, proteins, human proteins that are utilized often have very short half-lives. They have properties that have dual functions and maybe we only want one and not the other. And what this technology does um, is what Floyd created in his about 14 years of his career is a new DNA-based pair. That's pretty amazing when you think about that, that A, T, C, and G have been around since the beginning of time as we know it, and now here we have uh, new letters of DNA, which are mm -hmm. called X and Y. And what's important about X and Y is it changes the diversity of proteins that we can use as therapeutics. So now all of a sudden, instead of four letters, we have six. Instead of 20 amino acids, we have many more. And we can very specifically encode in the gene of a polypeptide the placement of a novel amino acid. And that novel amino acid can change properties of uh, proteins to our benefit. Wow, that's absolutely incredible. Um, could you tell us a little bit about one of your lead candidates right now? Yes, I can tell you about Thor 707, uh, which is our uh, uh, lead uh, program that we just filed an IND on, so a very exciting time for us, mm -hmm. moving into a clinical stage company uh, where we have changed the properties of uh, a protein called IL-2 or interleukin-2. Mm -hmm. Now, IL-2 has the properties, some of the properties of IL-2 have been known since the 80s when clinical trials uh, with IL-2 in certain types of cancer patients were first conducted. Mm -hmm. So this was in metastatic melanoma, metastatic renal cell uh, carcinoma, 
where back then, if you had a diagnosis like that, you were going to be dead within six months. Wow. This was very these are very aggressive diseases. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what, what we had at the time, chemotherapy, just didn't work. And what was found uh, in clinical trials with IL-2, uh, the, the trade name of that is Aldous Lucan, is that some people had responses, meaning their tumors shrunk, mm -hmm. but more importantly, some people got cured. Now, that was amazing back in the 80s. This was before we had the checkpoint inhibitors. Uh, and uh, it was the first time that people with metastatic melanoma, renal cell cancer, had hope. The problem is, is that it came with unbearable toxicity, sometimes fatal toxicity called vascular leak syndrome. And we didn't understand uh, the biology of IL-2 and what it did in the body, and we certainly didn't understand the etiopathology of vascular leak syndrome. Fast forward 30 years, and using the Synthorix platform, mm -hmm. now we've designed an IL-2, which can keep, uh, at least in preclinical models, keep the efficacy of IL-2, but dial out that very uh, severe toxicity known as vascular leak syndrome. And this is what we've demonstrated preclinically and why we're so excited to move into clinical trials. Wow, that's really, really, really interesting. Um, now, will this be applicable to other cancers as well and other autoimmune disorders? Uh, we think so. So we are developing Thor 707 for solid tumors. And of course, historically, the IL-2 sensitive tumors have been melanoma and renal cell, but mm -hmm. we believe that as we can dial out the toxicity, we may be able to get a greater um, immune-based effect that will translate into other solid tumors as well. And we certainly will be testing that. And then um, behind that, we have mm -hmm. other cytokines that we've tuned as well. Mm -hmm. So we do have a different flavor of IL-2 that um, tunes up a different T cell subpopulation that we will move into autoimmune diseases. We're still in the process of understanding which uh, synthorin, we call these uh, tuned cytokine synthorins, mm -hmm. which synthorin might be our clinical candidate, but we anticipate we'll be announcing that in the fall. And um, behind that, then we have other cytokines uh, for use in oncology, mm -hmm. such as IL-10 and IL-15. Wow. Sounds like this year is going to be a very fascinating year for Synthorix. And tell me a little bit about how you see the company evolving in the next three, five years. Yes, well, we've already evolved mm -hmm. a lot yeah. uh, in the uh, 18, 19 months since I've been there. Uh, uh, the company was about 14 people when I joined, and we're now 40-something, and we were very focused on how we could develop that strain, that E. coli strain, to produce the material that we needed, not just for clinical trials, but for commercialization as well. So we had some work to do to optimize the manufacturing process. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so we, we grew in that area of what's called CMC, or chemistry manufacturing and controls. Mm -hmm. Of course, we've added in uh, a clinical group um, so that we can begin uh, clinical trials once our IND has uh, cleared the FDA. Uh, and we've demonstrated successfully the power of this platform technology because we actually can change the properties of IL-2, as I said, to keep that good tumor fighting uh, properties but not have the, that severe toxicity. And uh, pretty exciting that we'll be moving that into the clinic and other things through preclinical development. Yeah, well, a great San Diego success story with Synthorix. Clearly, lots more to come this year and in the future. Uh, thank you so much for being here and sharing just a little bit of uh, the company. There's lots more to learn, clearly, and Synthorins will soon be a household name, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully. We, we look forward to it. So um, one of the things we wanted to bring uh, here to San Diego was a little piece of our market site from New York. So here behind Laura, we've got a uh, miniature version of our tower and a little game if you're willing to play. Ready to go. Awesome. So we're going to set a timer for 60 seconds. 
Laura is going to pick out one of these questions. I will read it. Give us the answer as quick as you can, and we'll move on to the next one. Great. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's do it. Inside, First selection. Inside look for 200. Inside look for 200. What is your favorite technology to use in the office? Oh, the favorite technology to use in the office, fermentation. Fermentation. <laughs> Most creative answer yet. Next one. <laughs> uh, let's do success for 400. Success for 400. How have you seen the industry change over the years? Wow. So we have gone from uh, chemotherapy and moving the Kaplan-Meier curve by a few months to being able to cure cancer in some patients, and we need to do that for everyone that has cancer. Excellent. Advice for 600. Advice for 600. Who do you look up to? Oh, there's so many people <laughs> that I look up to ha that have been mentors to me. And if I name them, I'm going to forget somebody. So <laughs> um, I've been very fortunate uh, to have had much help in my career, both in terms of people looking out for me and teams that I work with. The very diplomatic Oscar answer, <laughs> like that. Next uh, inside look for 600. Inside look for 600. All right, final question we've got here. When you're not in the office, where can we find you? In the water surfing. In the water Hands surfing. down, easy answer. All right, favorite <laughs> spot? Um, Scripps Pier. Here. Home surf beach. Yep. Great. Well, thanks so much for playing. It was lovely to meet thanks, you. Yvonne. Learned so much. And stay tuned for our next episode of NASDAQ CEO Spotlight Series. And we look forward to hopefully seeing you at Market Site soon. Right, yeah.